I wish I could say it's a season of the nativity of locusts. It's football season. Oh, well, I love it very good, but I got I mean, what I know that I'm just saying you're not out of the game. If somebody out of the game get into the game, I would still just put it on the game. But you're watching it on the television. Really? That shows that my audience, so we talk about elevating Christ. Where was Christ in Christ's respect to football? There was a quote a few years ago, a few years ago, about the head injuries that football players quite often encounter playing football. Now, I saw this guy who said that, and he got angry at me. I know Jacob here, Uncle got angry at me one time because I wouldn't let him play football. I don't know if you want to remember that, but I said, no, you're not going to play football. Ooh, 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 ooh. Why? Susan and Mike, they were not first came to Orlando. I don't know the name of the family. I think it's the Mobbins, but I'm not sure. Three family had an insured date to the year, and I was told the story that their son was a star high school football player. He went to the University of Miami, and the University of Florida. The first game, he was hit so hard, he became a pirate for the rest of his life. I said, you're not playing football. I'm sorry, I never loved football. Football is one of the violent activities of America. Yeah, you know the only people that really are really, in my opinion, talented? What? The quarterback. You know, the rest of them, I think, you know, the guy used to want to refrigerate Perry. Well, why did he got the name refrigerate Perry? He could knock anybody down. It's a violent sport. I'm not going to cut over that. I mean, but my point is that when you stay home from church because you want to get and get ready, for, for my mom was correctly right, you know, more than the football, the NFL game start in the morning on Sunday, you know, they call me after, you home, gotta get this, gotta get that, gotta get this. You are centered on football. In fact, in that one I saw the quote, this guy in the NFL, he said, we own Sunday. The church is used to own Sunday, but the NFL now owns Sunday. And now it's Sunday, I put them on Thursday night football, they own Thursday night. And what did we as American people, we do in many aspects of American life, we exported football. Now they play football games in London. As if we didn't do enough damage with the stuff that we were now in the country, export it to other countries. So my point is that if we do not elevate Christ in the center of our lives, we cannot reject the forces attached to the devil. Confession. In fact, this week some people were sent me there because of the case of this text in their confession. Let me tell you their confession. I said, you did not confess the most important sin. I said, what? And you did not confess the most important sin. So of course, I waited a moment and said, what sin is that?
some way, somehow, gets transported back in time to the two or three days before Paul Hall. Pretty, pretty. Okay. And now they've got all this firepower on this modern aircraft carrier against what they know is coming to Pearl Harbor by the Japanese. And right before they were to you know, uh, uh, keep the attack from happening, they get pushed back to the present. The point is that if you are not equipped, I am not equipped to resist the temptation of the devil without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy I am not. How much community do I drink? Do I take a sip? And I do like coffee fans. I do. I love it. I like coffee fans. That's why we are to add more one which becomes the blood of Christ to the blessings of the Lord. My point is that the satanic attacks will overcome you. And when you've got the confession, it's not, this is not an object common. I told the story before, we saw the strength of the people who were in But when I was uh, going to the university I attended, it was a uh, essential moment after the University of St. John in New York, and there was a priest that told one of the classes, and I uh, uh, went in and he told me that he had been wondering if he got to do something to preach at a camp, a camp, a Roman Catholic camp or something. One of the um, counselors came to him on Saturday, and the priest said, you know, the Romans are going to have an active tradition to this boy. Father, forgive me for my sin. He said, Father, forgive me for my sin. Right, bro? So he said, what are your sins? He said, I'm going to have sexual relations with my girlfriend tonight. He said, wait a minute. No confession of sin before you commit it. He said, I'm not going to get it in the morning to get absolution. So I think I'll get it done. That's really true. This is what some people think of confession. Well, just tell the priest what I did. I'm okay. In fact, there was another one a movie a few years ago where some guy said, this is a great picture of speaking of the Holy Spirit. You can do the sin, confess it, and then go back and do it right there. The word repentance means you turn away from. I was at this dinner on the and they had some delicious uh, Lebanese food and a big uh, tray of hummus. And the servant said, would you like some hummus? I said, I love hummus, but I can't eat hummus. She said, no. I said, because it sticks to me. It's like when someone, it doesn't leave me. I gave way for eating hummus. My point is that knowing that, I turned away. Did you know that I used to eat pizza down there? Not in the right. Not in this century. I did. When I lived in New York, I did eat pizza. And when I decided that I was going to eat pizza again, I never ate pizza again. I was in Naples last year with my daughter Alexandra, the best pizza place in Naples. Oh, come on, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just to get them off my back, I said, I'll tell you why I took a bite. I said, I don't like pizza. The point of the matter, when you turn away from something, you don't turn back to it. The Bible says that even a dog does not turn back to its vomit. So when you have vomited out the sin, why are you going back to it? Because you didn't really vomit it out. Just telling me it's not enough for you to really change. But God says in verse 16, for God says in the famous verse of the Bible, for God so loved the world that gave him to the Son, the world of people who should not perish, but have a lasting life. God, the word for it is God loves all of his creation. But most importantly, he loves mankind. Let me show you something.
light of Christ, and we see all the stuff that we shouldn't have done that we did do, and we are so ashamed of it, something's wrong. They run from the light into the watch. The darkness, and who is the reigning darkness king? The devil. Well, God doesn't have to send anybody to hell. They take themselves to hell. They're already living in hell. When the stuff that goes on in our society is so disgraceful. The Romans didn't do this. I don't remember being an island of someone in Australia. I don't remember anywhere in Roman society. I don't remember anywhere in Roman society where they were choosing gender. I'm not talking about one thing very much that they are trying to get people. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about people choosing to be poor. People choosing to choose to be here. That's how crazy it's become. You need to understand this is the oh, no, no, no. it's going on. And it's going to get worse. Prepare yourself. It's going to get worse. If we do not develop ourselves with the protection of the Holy Spirit, it's going to get worse. It'll get worse for the me. But it will get worse for us because we knew better. Only by believing and living in Christ can you help to possibly avoid condemnation. Remember, please remember. Today we, of course, what is the course? There is a law in the Old Church that says every baptized Christian has to wear a cross. I'll say this Let us pray to the Lord.